Detroit is Different is where you get information, artistry, history, music, and even comedy. Detroit is Different, a home for the culture of Detroit. Visit online at DetroitIsDifferent.com today. Still here, Taste the Black Spirits, Detroit, Garden Theater. We're talking to different people, black folks, that are running liquor brands and spirits. And like I say, this is something big as we think about all we put into the nightlife industry as black people. You know, we know we love our favorite bars. We love our favorite restaurants. Even sometimes, you know, it could be the motorcycle club or pool hall. But a lot of this takes place. And the way that these people make their money is off of drinking. But it stops right after it pours. And now we're talking about how to keep that money coming and circulating in our community as it continues to pour. So right now I have Maurice Morton, but Mo <laughs> of Tusk. And Tusk is something very unique. Definitely. definitely. So uh, I'm going to let you tell some of this story of Ooh. what Tusk Liquor is and how it came about. Okay. Well, let's start with how it started. Yeah. So uh, we inherited land from my grandfather, right, that was purchased in 1906. Wow. By his great great grandparents. Wait, right? time out, time out, time out, time out. We gonna we gonna stop. You said you inherited land from your grandparents. Yeah, from my, my grandfather, which is my mom and my aunt and uncles out there, as their dad. Okay, yeah. so grandfather and their great great his his great great grandparents who were not only married the year slavery was abolished. Who then, you know, because once slavery was over, everybody went to sharecropping, right? Mm -hmm. So some of the land that they actually worked on as slaves and sharecrop, they went and purchased mm. when, when they had an opportunity to. Wow. Right? So then after that, they continued to pass the land down through generations. And then mm. once they got to my grandfather, he passed away in 2007. He made my mom on his deathbed promise him that she would never, ever sell this land. Wow. And she would never let anything happen to the land. Nobody take it from us. Nobody, you know, do anything. Don't try to make money off it. Make money with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So um, in 2019, my aunt decided to go down to just check on the land, make sure nobody was squatting or just try to move on the land and try to set up because nobody yeah. had been down there for years, you know? So um, on that journey, on that trip, her and my cousin went together. My cousin, she was like, um, Auntie, what are we going to do with the land? Mm -hmm. So my mom's like, you know, I'll probably just retire, come down here, move to the, you know, down here to Vacation the country. Space. Yeah, just just create something for the kids and grandkids to come down to. So my cousin was like, why don't we just start a hemp farm with the land? So my mom's like, nah, you know, we I don't want to be no drug dealer. We ain't going to be no <laughs> cartel family. Yeah. But she didn't really understand the education mm -hmm. of what hemp was versus marijuana. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So then when she got educated, she talked to her son. She said, okay, well, let's, let's do it. You know, so she literally... She was working for the uh, federal government for 35 years, retired. Wow. Within 30 days of it, this I come up with this idea. She retired, took her retirement money along with the rest of the family, investing into ourselves, and she moved down to the farm down there. Wait, time out. This is this is heavy because yeah. this is like the story of like collectively what what many families speak about. Yeah. Like families coming together yeah. around a business idea yeah. in America yeah. as as America engages us in business, whether we want to be passive about it right. or aggressive about exactly. it. Exactly. And your family went about it very aggressively. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, on something that was passed down through generations. Through generations, bro. To and it's crazy because, like I said, she she moved down to the farm. Uh, we started. We and it's crazy because we we got all of our licensing. Everything processed in October of 2019, October, November. Mm -hmm. Of course, everybody know 2020 came. We yeah. had this massive pandemic, right? So, but we still kept pushing. We still, we, we planted our seeds and said we still going to just experiment with the grow and just see, because we first time hemp growers, all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been, I've been a cannabis enthusiast, you know, my pretty much my whole life. Mm -hmm. But just being in the business aspect of it, of growing, being a grower is totally different. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, um, I just okay there we we did it we grew at the first time uh we grew i think we do, did two acres right mm. we did two acres of hemp and so we had all this hemp grain seeds just laying around we didn't know what to do with them we had uh we were trying to like sell it to levi's to make clothes because you can make fifty thousand products with hemp grain seed right wow over fifty thousand products so um mm. We just said, man, what are we gonna do with this so my cousin just doing all this research he found about found out about highway vodka right and um he said man you think we can do something like this without without seeds i said you know it's, i'm sure we can if we find somebody that i thought about it my guy who was here 
Um, I went to school with his name is Ray from Whiskey Right, who is another whiskey brand that's here, black owned whiskey from the DC area. Um, I called him up. I said, man, check out this article, man. You know, do you think y'all can do this with our seeds? He said, man, yeah, let's let's try something. You know, so we we initially were going to do a whiskey, right, hmm. or bourbon, but with the aging of it, with the years, you know, we just thought that we wanted to try to do something that we can capitalize on now. Mm. So they came back to us and said, man, look, you know, we can do the same process uh, with a vodka or a rum. Wow. So well, well, let's try it. Yeah. So they start creating formulas and letting me taste them and start doing some taste testing and experimenting. And that's literally how Tusk, it just went from an idea of an article to a phone conversation to now being in the bottle, bro. Okay, now that is like such a powerful story. And I'm glad that uh, you had the runway to share with Detroit is different about definitely, this. Definitely. Though we're connected with uh, another chocolate city when we think about exactly, it. Exactly, man. The D.C., DMV area. Yeah. We, we, we very, uh, you similar. know. We, we no, we're definitely similar. No, we definitely similar, man. Just being here for the weekend and riding around, man. It's like, man, it's feel like I'm home for real. I know. It's like, that looked like my cousin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It's crazy. It's like, uh, what, what do I tell my sister sometimes? It's like, you know, you feel like you at home when you within a like four mile radius of a you buy we fry establishment. Exactly. You know what I'm exactly. Saying? No question. So we we changing that in the neighborhood. For sure, but, man. Let's do it. Um, this uh, th this whole concept coming together, bringing the family together. What has it been like connecting, doing a business venture with your family? Because oftentimes, especially uh, the American ideology is like, you know, money and blood don't mix, money mm -hmm. and blood don't mix. How has the family come together and seen this as an asset and work together? Well, it's, it's been rough. I ain't going to lie. You know, mm -hmm. we have our moments where um, we don't all agree, but you sometimes have to agree to disagree. You know what I'm saying? And then, But we all understand the bigger goal that's at stake. You know, mm -hmm. we creating something not only for my mother and my generation, but for my sons and my daughter and then their kids to come. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at it on a grander scale. Like we all understand that we are we have the ability to break generational curses, but mm -hmm. while creating generational wealth. You know wow. what I'm saying? So we're doing both of those together and understanding how powerful that is. We we just we man, we to be honest, bro, before every everything we do, even coming here before we came, we pray, bro. You know mm. what I'm saying? We put God first in everything we do, and we know as long as he got us, we good. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going to be a rough journey. We're going to get knocked off your pivot. You know, you're going to have people that's going to doubt you. People going to tell you, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. You know, but those naysayers are just ones just mad that I look at it. They don't have your idea, so they don't want you to succeed at it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So what? you just got to keep pushing. Because if you ain't got nobody talking about you, you ain't doing something right in my eyes. You know okay. what I'm saying? So that, that definitely leads to, like, some of the logistical things. It's yeah. like... It's tough being black and in business, period. Definitely. But not only have you chosen to enter the liquor business, which has its own set yep. of like what's going on, yep. but also in hemp. So like you combine uh, one of the most one of the most interested in, in growing businesses in yeah. America today, yep. kind of connecting more into though hemp for people to know hemp is uh, uh marijuana is like you, you manipulate how the plant is grown, right. but hemp is not manipulating no, exactly. the plant. It's, yep. it's letting the flower grow naturally, naturally with, in its purest form. Yes, yep, definitely. Yes. So, uh, so it, it, it definitely brings about first let's go into being black owned hemp farm. Yeah. And I can only imagine it's not so many of them. No, it's not. Um, it's not. It's really not. What is it? What is that experience like? How has it been like entering that industry? How have you been embraced just from that angle alone? Uh, actually, it's it's been rough. Honestly, you know, mm -hmm. the hemp industry hasn't accepted us as of yet. I think mainly because of the skin, color of our skin. It's not too many yeah. people doing it. That look yeah. like us, and you talking about a whole family, and that's what, you know that's what, I'm, saying? what I'm saying. It's, it's like, like, come on, man, yeah. you got it's not just one or two people. You got it's fifteen of us involved yeah. in this situation. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, and then not only that, we got all our children. We got the children down there working on the farm. Wow. So they they understanding that at a young age, my my youngest daughter is six. She be down on the farm loving it. You know, she put her, her boots on. She, you know, put her bonnet on her head. She like, Daddy, I'm ready yeah, to go to right. work. Overalls you know are not a fashion statement nah, Exactly, anymore. exactly, <laughs> man. So it's it's crazy, man, just knowing that we in the industry. But, the, you know, it's rough because, you know, the funding don't always come our way. We do everything out of pocket, man. You mm. know, we haven't had any venture capital, you know, and any any major investors. Or any, like, you, uh, weird, like, government subsidies. Yeah, like, even, of, even like all the farming man, I'm we, we had We had situations where they quote-unquote, lost our paperwork when we applied for all these grants through the state 
and yeah. through the through the county and the area where we are. Um, but you know that hasn't stopped us, bro. You know what I'm saying? We just keep pushing because us as a people, man, we're very, very. You know, we had that perseverance in us that you know from the them 1800s. You know what I'm saying? Them 1700s, man. You and, know, yeah. And, and you, it's it's you, just uh, you know we're strong. We're strong people in general. So we mm -hmm. just carry on that model, man. That as long as we stick together, can nobody stop us. You know, but at the same time, we got to face the reality that this is a tough business to be in. But you have to stick it out if that's what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? And, and and with that, that's so powerful because, as you say, the resilience comes from before. It, it's it's been in your family for forever. Yeah. Uh, so so when we think about the size, uh, people know I have some garden boxes and and then we we city folks sometimes. Right, right, you know what I'm saying? Right. So so when you think of two acres, you're thinking like you you can't even really imagine what two acres is right two acres is a lot of land it's a lot of land but we got 58 we got oh, actually we have a total of 63 we got a total of 63 all together so it's like man you go out there and you be like wow yeah like you can get lost out here but yeah you know like, at, at one point you will end up back with on what's yours you know yeah, at the end of the day like you're just walking around on something that like, belongs yeah. it just feels good man to be up mm. on a tractor i'll be up on the tractor bush hogging I'm, i've been in a city boy my whole life and that's DC. that's the you other know? question i was gonna have just being uh from the dmv area yeah. and now going to a farm yeah. halifax virginia like it's a whole different culture whole feel, different like, culture, bro. like adjusting to it yeah um as you know, I just have a couple garden boxes, but one of the other things, and I know a lot of you guys are going to be starting your garden boxes soon as it's breaking in March right. and stuff. But right. Be prepared to commit to watering and yeah. tending to what's going on. Got to, and, got to, got to. And, and, and knowing that you're dealing with insects, yeah. you're dealing with um, vermin, you're dealing yep. with uh, sometimes too much rain, sometimes too much sun. You, mm -hmm. you're, you're basically learning that we're for me at least gardening on a small level uh, it, it's been humbling to learn so much of the elements that impact just the natural flow of life but yep. being that it's a business model for you i can only imagine how much you're now more in tune with nature right i'm telling you bro like it, and it just feels so natural when we be out there man being mm -hmm. in the, on the farm it's like i never would have thought that you know coming from the city being in the city all my life I mean, of course, you take trips over the summer, might visit for a day or two, but it's nothing like actually being there for real. You know, mm -hmm. when you were a kid, you just want to have fun, just running in the field. You know, you're not understanding what the significance of it is, you know. But being out there now, then, like I said, I got my wife out there, my kids, you know, the rest of my family, all my cousins and their kids. It's just it, I have to take it in sometime and be like, wow, like we really doing this together, you mm -hmm. know. And the fact that that whole family dynamic, because we've always been strong. That's what this mm -hmm. elephant on the bottle is about. You know, it, my grandmother was a collector. She wasn't a delta, but she was a collector of elephants because of what the other meanings that elephants stand for, people don't know. Like strength, unity. You never see an elephant alone. You always see them together as a family, mm -hmm. right? And that's what she stood for. Like, I mean, outside of the wealth and all the other things as far as money, but I'm talking about the morals and principles of what an elephant stands for. You know, she, mm -hmm. she represented all of that. So and she instilled that in us. So we continue on her legacy. That's why we honored her. Named it the tusk. Yeah, yeah. We named it. We named it. We put the all of our with more hemp, more industries. All our companies have this elephant logo. You know what I'm saying? And it's a it's just an honor her. And it is and then we got my grandfather with the land. So we we putting them two together because they were the catalyst to really creating what we are. You know what mm. I'm saying? So we just have to honor them, man, and pay homage to what they did because they started this for real. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. If it wasn't for them starting this family, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's I I'm in awe about it, man. I, I can't I can't be happy enough for what we're doing, but I'm also happy for where this future going to take us. You know what I'm saying? Because we just getting started, man. All right. So liquor's a little bit different, as I just did uh, in, in most of these interviews. You will hear this, you know, because liquor's not. As I'm the example I used before, and I will use again. It's not like a t-shirt business. Yeah. It's not like you. Oh, that's a cool shirt. I want to buy it from Instagram. Right. Liquor is distributed through states differently. Mm -hmm. uh, how has it been entering that? Where can we purchase the liquor? What, where? What's What's the deal there? Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's been a It's been a journey, but you know, we actually for us to not to have a full year. And just talking to other brands and, and just, I mean, they've been doing it maybe two or three years, mm -hmm. you know, before us. And for them to hear how far we've come in less than a year, it's, you know, they're like, man, you guys are doing really good. So you got, 
We ship in forty two states. So wow, forty two. Forty two states. What? So, what? Uh, okay, so that's so many. That's yeah. so many states. But let's throw out some states that Detroit would care about. Yeah. So no. So you got. I mean, only only state in the Midwest that we don't ship to is Iowa. Wow. So that's Michigan, Illinois, Ohio. Ohio. That's that's basically Big Ten country. Yeah, yeah all Big but, Ten country. But Iowa, except Iowa, we don't ship in. Of course, the Dakotas. We don't ship to Mississippi. Mm-hmm. And like some some northeastern states like uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and stuff like that. But I can be New York, New York, I can be in we, Cali. Cali I can actually, be we have we have Vegas. We have, yeah, we yeah, ba- we actually have distribution in California, Florida, DC, Maryland, Virginia, and New York. Mm. So we in stores in Florida and California. We in stores okay. in DC. Uh, we'll be in a couple of stores. We just got approved for uh, distribution in Virginia. In Maryland, mm. so we'll be in stores in there soon. Okay, but you can go on tuskspirits.com, man, and we ship it right to your doorstep mm. in 42 states. So that's big, yeah, it's big, man. That's we big. Hey, it's crazy because it's you know, it's like I said, we we at first when we first started, we can only ship to DC and Virginia, mm. we were limited, but we you know, just just working and just finding different you know, distributors and just doing the groundwork, man. We actually hooked up with somebody back home in Maryland. Who has a, a online store that allows shipping to forty two states? So hmm. we got with them, and man, now we here, man. That's that's power. Yeah. Uh, so what what's the reviews? What what do people say usually when they get the taste? Uh, you know, because it's almost like people would be like, all right, am I gonna get high? Yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, if, man, I, if I got my drug tested, yeah. my job, yeah. like, you know, I don't want to lose my job. Exactly. I want to support you, brother. Yeah, exactly. Not. I mean, and it's just about educating people on that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because hemp. And, and marijuana are two different things. You know, mm-hmm. even even hemp can be grown two ways. You got the CBD form, which is smokable, and is used to make tinctures and uh, the oils and all that kind of stuff. Because we have a CBD coconut oil too that we sell on our website for the more hemp. But um, the thing about test man is that the hemp seed provides such an element that you don't get normally in the vodka. Mm-hmm. You know, no most vodkas don't go down. They go down harsh. You know, you kind of need something to chase behind it and drink behind it. But this test vodka man. I'm a whiskey drinker, mm-hmm. and I haven't probably bought maybe but three bottles of whiskey since we dropped these bottles last wow. year in September because the taste of it is so – it has a flavor. The hemp gives it a flavor, mm-hmm. and it gives it a nice uh, aftertaste. You know what I'm saying? So it's now you don't get that afterburn going down down the rum. That's a little different. The rum got a little kick to it, mm-hmm. but it's still flavorful. The hemp provides a different – like I said, a definitely a different element to it that you don't normally get out of it but we won awards and everything in our first year man we played mm. silver and bronze um in the uh international spirit competition in california at sunset and then we did the uh, las vegas international spirit competition mm. and we placed in both of those man in our wow. first year so to me that says a lot when you in a room with 190 different other brands and they pick yours out of those you know what i'm saying that's big that yeah, is that's big, big especially you know? uh right out the gate right out the gate man huh. so that, that just goes to show that you know we have a really solid product you know and then, mm-hmm. i mean just when people taste it you know they they look for something that's not there you know when you taste vodka you kind of most you see their faces they they looking yeah. for a burn but then they say like oh wow this is really smooth it's really mm-hmm. sweet it has a nice you know nice aftertone to it and as far as like with the drug testing goes only people that get tested for hemp and CBD is active duty military. Mm-hmm. So if you're active duty military, you know, it'll be a little hard for you to drink it because I was gonna say that's yeah, that's a lot of that DMV area. Yeah, thinking, yeah, it it is, but it's it's you know, it's it's a lot outside of that too in True. the DMV. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because no, most mo- most definitely. of the military that you get mo- most of the military people live on base because yeah. they, they have base housing down there. But True. um yeah, for the most part, man, once people get educated on it and understand what it really is. I mean, you know, it's so undeniable. I can keep my job. You can keep your job okay. and feel good. But mm-hmm. but also another element that hemp provides is a health health benefit. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because hemp has omega-3s in it, which is good for your blood pressure. You hmm. know, it's gluten-free. It's plant-based. It's non-GMO. So all mm-hmm. those all those elements that are in hemp are now in Tusk. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it's it, you're pretty much drinking healthy. Because hmm. I'm going to tell you like this. I went through a bottle of vodka, man, just partying one night. Woke up the next day with no hangover. That's uh, that, that that's a lot, a lot for a lot of people. Yeah. People be like, all right, man, but how tall is he? And then what's yeah. his... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's still a lot. Yeah, that's still a lot, man. That's a lot. Yeah, so it's... I mean, it's good, man. I, I, I stand behind it. 
a hundred percent, and I will continue to. You know what That's I'm saying? Good. And and I I believe in it. And I just know as long as we stick together as a family, man, we we gonna be good. All right, so let the people know if they're interested in uh, connecting and and uh, making sure they make that purchase. You know, it's a lot of bar owners. Right. Uh, you know, Detroit definitely has a nightlife culture like that, DMV. No uh, question. You know, so how do they connect? How do they? Uh, man, they can find us on Instagram. You can hit me on Instagram at uh, Tusk underscore the underscore brand. And on Facebook at Tusk Spirits, Tusk, T-U-S-K, Spirits with a S dot com is the website. So that's where they can catch us. You can order bottles. We can ship it to them. They can reach out to me on Instagram if they have any events and stuff they want me to be a part of. Me and the family would be glad to come out, man. That's big. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate you more, bro. For real, man. This this yes, means yes. a lot to put our family on your platform and share us with your audience, man. For real. Respect. Yeah, Thank you. definitely, man.